Okay, John, it's yours. Oh, thank you. 670 days. That's what I, I type into Google. When was, uh, when, how, how many days since March 20th, which was the day I uh, bolted out of my office. Um, I've been back to the office a couple of times, you know, three times, I think, in those almost now coming up on two years. Um, actually, the amazing thing is how little, how, I, I, I didn't go there to get any paperwork because all my paperwork is on computers somewhere. I think uh, I, I went there to take pictures of like some things um, that I wanted to use in slides. Um, and uh, all I'm saying is if you've made it this far through the pandemic, the, 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 you, you can make it further. And I know it's been awfully rough for everybody, but it's not going to be normal, right? It's going to be a new normal. I had to dig this shirt out of like the bottom of my drawer. I hadn't worn it for six months. Fortunately, Zoom has a de-wrinkle filter. Um, so you can't tell just how, just how awful it is. Um, um, so this is the TLDR, the too long, didn't read. And I'm going to work my way very quickly through this. I read somewhere that if you talk faster in video, then it's actually easier for people to understand. So I'm going to see if, uh, if that works out. Here we go. First of all, membership is solid. Basically, the dues are going to be the same next year. No change there. Um, we have 180, 98 law schools, 18 affiliates, 74 legal. Although all of those, uh, the, the affiliates and the legal law schools outside the U.S. is still, we're, we're still working through those things because they don't necessarily run on the same schedule as, uh, as law schools do. But membership is solid. And that's great. During a time like this, we like, we like it that things are steady in terms of membership and in terms of our ability to continue to operate. Right? Lesson usage and casebook downloads are up, but only a little slightly, but it's a, it's a, it's a continued trend. You know, 30,000 E. Langdell books downloaded, 581,000 lesson runs. It's actually closer to 600,000, I think, because uh, Elmer told me he took that number right at like the second week of December. Um, and uh, 29,000 new registrations. So that represents mostly the one L's. Um, there's more like 50, 60, 70, I don't know, we, we, we have over 100,000 people registered at the website, um, but these are, the, these are the new ones since, uh, since the beginning of the semester. So awesome. Um, we have, whoops, in terms of those uh, downloads and e -Langdale, we have a lot of new and revised titles. We have a lot of rev revision titles that came out in 2021. I'm not gonna read this. You can literally go to the website and click on e -Langdale uh, uh, coming or eBooks uh, upcoming and, and read these for yourselves. Um, but uh, it, it's just an indicator that, that once you publish a book, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it hasn't graduated yet. It's a, we have to continue to nurture it, uh, give updates to it, um, keep it going. And we continue to interact with our, with our authors on those books. Um, at the same time, we have a bunch of new titles in progress and I want to, pull out two especially. Um, First Generation's Guide to Law School by Professor uh, Melissa Hale at Loyola. She's one of our law school success fellows. I mean, this is, this is obviously not a case book, but it's a, it's a fascinating sort of, if you're thinking about going to law school or if you're going to law school and you don't know any lawyers or don't have any lawyers in your family sort of thing, it's, it should be a fantastic book. And Social Media Law by, whoops, can you can't read Thaddeus's name there. Oh, sorry, Melissa, I'm going to borrow your face. Uh, Social Media Law professor by Professor Thaddeus Hoffmeister at Dayton. I'm, I'm really interested in how this book is going to get used because it's not that there are a lot of schools teaching a social media course, but there's a lot of situations where a chapter from this book will drop into another course towards crim law, defamation, intellectual property, so many different things. And I'm fascinated to see if the fact that it's an open access book makes it uh, adoptable in, in part, at least for an awful lot of people. So that should be interesting. All right, as always, we're, we're always looking for new authors for books. We pay people to write case books and then give them away for free. Um, and, and the goal there is not the free, although that's awfully nice. The goal is to give faculty the agency to do whatever they want to remix and repurpose the book and to give students the ability to do what they want if the book is adopted, right? You can download the Word version of the book. All right, new fellowships. 
Last year we did law school success fellows and we did a, we're doing another round of them. We've got four of the fellows coming back. Whoops, I'm, I'm in their way again. We've got four of the fellows coming back, but we're doing something, uh, some things a little bit differently. They're, they're writing some more LSS lessons, but they're also creating some podcasts and they're gonna take, each one is gonna take three lessons and add pop-up video to some of the more interesting or tricky questions. In other words, after the student reads the question and answers, or if there's a subject being covered that they think they can add more, there'll be a button there with the author to pop up and give them a 30 to 90 second sort of uh, additional bit of information. This is, the, this is our first step. We wanna, we wanna then go to other authors of Cali lessons and say, would you like to insert author commentary? Think you know, director's commentary or DVD commentary, you know, and, and then another step would be to let faculty add their own commentary that might even, you know, that, that could say to the students. So in other words, the student might be running a, a lesson and then come upon a page and they'd be like, wow, this is really hard. And there's a pop up of the, of their faculty member who's teaching the course. Um, so that makes it the most relevant information. I, I, I continue to believe that this, this one of the silver linings of this pandemic is a lot of um, literacy in video. And so, you know, we're taking a cue from our uh, keynote speaker from the last conference who talked about that and the ease with which you can slide quality, high quality, but very short and informal video into uh, teaching situations. All right, we've been working on a brand new award system. It's all but done. Um, we're going to be launching that very soon. It's got a bunch of new features, or it's got a bunch of it's it's a it's a reboot of the of the code so that it's secure. But we're but but in the in the process of doing that, we thought of a whole bunch of other things that we could now begin to look at with awards. Um, obviously, it has a smoother UI. We want to let students claim their awards. We want to let them download the PDF of the award. I've got a couple of schools who are like, we don't even want the paper anymore. Uh, we just, you know, the students just want the, the JPEG or the PDF. And, um, and, and we want to collect it where we can, with the students' permissions, of course, their stories. How did you get the highest grade in the class? How did you tally that course? Um, and then turn around and share that with, uh, with other students. Um, so lots going on there. We're look, we've got multiple projects where we're making our law school success lessons and some of what I would call our 101 lessons available to people who are not law students, either pre-law or undergrad or, or actually anybody uh, in the public for free. So uh, part of this is a, is a project with Access Lex and their Lex scholars um, uh, for, for people who, who are guaranteed a slot if they if they complete a course of study that, that in which we're helping them design the curriculum for that. And the, and the readings and the materials will be podcasts and casebook readings for Cali and Cali lessons. We are also doing something with law school transparency to make uh, some of these law school success lessons and others available to pre-law advisors. These are people who advise people whether or not to go to law school. And the, and the overall goal of these uh, plans is, is to increase, increase the pipeline for diversity for the people who are thinking going to law school that are not represented traditionally in, uh, in lawyer ranks, you know, to give them early access to Cali and then to basically just increase the awareness about Cali as a resource for these people. So that's, uh, that's, been, that, that's a work in progress right now. We're, uh, for the nerds out there, we're going to be upgrading the website to Drupal 9, and, and it, it's actually a core important thing that we're doing because it's going to enable us to do a whole bunch of other things that were difficult or more difficult to do with, uh, with, with the previous iterations of our website. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a ton of work, you know, um, and, and important for us to do. I always want to throw a nerd thing out there for uh, for the tech nerds to know that uh, you know there is there there is tech still happening with Cal. ADG author usage is up, and uh, let let me dive deeper into that um, because we made our own uh, um, infographic or out of that. Jessica did. You know there are over six hundred thousand ADG guided interviews run in the last year in twenty twenty one. 
Um, they were used from six different continents. Um, we're thinking of sending somebody to Antarctica just to, just to you know, be a completionist there. Um, uh, 270,000 times people clicked on the learn mores. That's the little pop-up that comes up if there's like a, a legal definition or a, or a diagram that can be showed. 196,000, they clicked on pop-ups inside of A to J got interviews. We get those analytics. We, we run our own analytics server. It's called Matomo instead of Google Analytics so that it's completely, you know, we can't even, we don't even know who those people are and nobody can tell who those people are if they got a hold of our analytics. So we're really conscious of and careful about security when we're dealing with people's legal information. And it's almost a 50-50 split between mobile and desktop on, on ADG Office. Not true on Cali lessons. In Cali lessons, it's mostly people on desktop. It's mostly law students using their desktop. Um, but on A to J, it's mobile. And that's because the poor, for a poor people or self-represented litigants, a lot of them, their only access to the internet is through their uh, mobile, their cell phone. So, you know, we're now at almost 7 million runs over the last uh, decade. Um, document, document automation, as you know, is a, is a great learning tool. Um, you know, we teach courses or we offer presentations to dozens of schools on how to use A to J Author. We have exercises that your school can use. And, um, and, and this last point, I wanna, I wanna dig a little deeper into. Document automation is, it, it's not, it's certainly not the only solution to access the justice, but it's easy. I mean, at this point, it's, it's easy. It's almost a no brainer. And it has a very high return on investment. In other words, the money and the effort you put into it results in a, a multiplier, a force multiplier effect for, that benefits a great number of people. So it's, so it's worth doing in terms of the, the cost of that. You know, access to justice, and, and these are familiar if you're, if you're on access to justice Twitter or been going to these things, there, there, there's a whole greatest hits here, right? There's existential problems of systemic bias. The courts are underfunded. The laws are complex. Uh, lawyers are too expensive. And part of that is because legal education is too expensive or, they, or they're paying off their, their, uh, their loans. There's not enough support for legal aid, you know, and, and overall there's a sense that there's a beginning of a breakdown of trust in the system and it's scary, right? Um, there was a great book written called uh, Administrative Burden where, you know, uh, the, the subheading there is policy making by other means. In other words, sometimes a law or a rule or a thing will get passed, but the other side will make it too hard to use um, or difficult for anybody. So, so it becomes a pirate victory or a, or a weak victory. We've, I mean, that, that, that's just horrible. It, that's, uh, you know, that, that's preventing so much good things from happening that even when we, when we get new efficiencies and new capabilities, um, you know, some of the old problems of the system have to be automated in that way. Um, you know, we work, that, that, that's where A to J author comes into play. And that's where we're trying to lower the complexity or at least help people with, with their, with the simple thing simple, I put in quotes, of filling out, you know, court forms. Um, in terms of uh, cost of lawyers and legal ed, of course, um, our books are free. Um, that's not going to make a, much of a dent if the, if, you know, when the tuition is high, but it makes, but it, but it counts. Um, and we believe, and, and as I said before, it's not about the money. It's about the freedom to generate, create the, the educational environment that the teacher wants to create or that the student wants to create for themselves that they want to construct. Um, so, you know, law schools have a role to play in this access to justice space. And so does Cali. And, and we want to, we, we, I want you to know that we are doing that in your name and with your, with your help and support. Um, and it's going pretty well. All right. A to J author is open source. I, I'm, I, I dropped the slide in almost everything I say to remind people. You can go to the GitHub and download it right now. Um, it's uh, mostly a JavaScript, single page web app sort of situation, but it's uh, free and open source for anyone. Um, we've got some grants that we're working on this year with Data J Author that will um, you know, allow people to share modules and pieces of guided interviews. Um, 
you know, there's over a thousand forms that have been automated. So chances are, if you're automating something in a state, then somebody else has already automated in a different state. And it makes sense to just grab what they've got and make small changes. We're adding the capability to do document preview, uh, better user navigation, smoother, and uh, you know, the ability to uh, get rid of the avatar if you dislike it. I happen to think the avatar is awesome and I like it, but you know, um, uh, people get their choices now. So I've now used that word smoother uh, multiple times. Um, I feel like I should explain myself. Smooth is the new easy, it's the new obvious, it's the new simple. When people complain about the computer not working, they say, that's not very smooth, it's clunky, it's hard to use. And, um, and, and, and when you peel that back, whenever technology say something is smoother, what they're really, what, what you have to realize is that there's a lot of arguing going on behind the scenes, how to make something easier uh, to use. Uh, which is to say that easy is not easy. Easy is hard and obvious isn't. It's not obvious. You have to talk to the users. Users are wrong sometimes. We get lots of advice from our users and from other people and, and, they, and it's conflicting advice. So it's difficult for us to reconcile those. And oh yeah, developers can be wrong all the time. So, so, so this, this comes down to like everyone isn't. So whenever I hear sentences start with, well, everyone does this or everyone thinks this way, I always think everyone isn't everyone. It's, it's you or it's, the, or, it's, or it's your perception um, of what that thing is. So the hope though, is that afterwards, everyone agrees that the fix was some sort of an improvement. Um, and, and it's difficult to get to that phase. You know, you're mixing art and science, and then you're deciding if you can pay for it, you know, how much will it cost and the hidden cost because no software project gets finished right away. Um, you know, do you have the time to do this? Do you have the talent to do this? You know, will the audience show up even after you think you've nailed the, the product, the, the needs, the user interface, you know, and, and that's, that's what we do. We, we try to bring together this art, science, time, talent, audience, uh, using your dues money to create things that are of value to uh, the legal education and the access to justice communities. So that's Kelly for you. So KellyCon 22 is gonna be in Chicago. Man, I've got every finger and toe crossed, but it's looking bad with Omicron, isn't it? But we'll make that decision in another couple of weeks, absolutely. And um, we're turning 40 next year. And this is a huge deal. This is a, a shot taken straight out of our Articles of Incorporation that it was on this day, on, 11, on the June 11th, uh, 1982, that Cali was incorporated. Of course, you know, at that time, Cali lessons weren't e didn't even look this good. They were ru running on uh, Turbo Pascal. I, actually, maybe at this point, they did look that good. It would be 82, I guess, yeah. But, uh, but they were running on uh, UCSP, US, UCSD Pascal, um, and we distributed them on floppies. And later, we did things in Toolbook and Hyperpad. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, went to a Visual Basic and then eventually a Flash interface. You know, we, we sent zillions of floppies or CD-ROMs around after that. You know, I, uh, Sam dug this one out for me, Sam Gashorn, you know, celebrating our 20th year, 1982 to 2002, over 270. We now have almost a thousand more lessons than that in 28 different legal subject areas. So 40 years for a tech outfit is pretty, pretty darn good. You know, we, we've hung in there um, and that's because of you, you know, you've, you've kept us hanging in there. You know, so, so the interactive portion of this is, uh, you know, send us an email at webmaster.org on how you think we should celebrate our 40th anniversary. We've got some ideas and we're working them up and I'll let you know as the year goes through, but, but, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. So finally, I'm done. I always have to thank my board of directors, my president, Chris, Vice President Steve and uh, Treasurer Jane Wynn and Secretary Marjorie, um, without whose help, you know, we, we could not operate this thing. And our brand new board of directors, I need to get myself out of the way. Here, here I'll make myself really small. Woo. Um, our, here's our brand new board of directors. I was uh, confident that uh, folks would be elected. Um, and um, 
And of course, thank you to all the authors, the fellows, the CEBers, the folks who review our materials, uh, the Cali reps, that's hopefully a lot of you, um, and the speakers and the registrars who enter the awards, and of course, the students who, who uh, use our lessons and give us positive you know, feedback or helpful feedback. Uh, without all that, we, we couldn't do what we do. So I got a, I've got an awesome staff. I, um, I'd love to, you know, call them out each individually, but um, I've gone on a little bit too long. Um, and uh, we're a small staff, but I think we, 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 we do way more. We, we, we do way more work than what appears we would be capable of. If we knew there were only uh, 11 of us. Um, unfortunately, I don't have to do any work at all. They do all the work. I just come here and give this yearly talk and take all the credit. <laughs> all right. Uh, oh, I, I noticed my, my video didn't fuzz out on when I said that. So that's all I've got to say. Um, thanks very much for your support and, um, and we're done.